Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today on a famous driveway at a famous garage here with Tyler Hoovy's garage to check out some of the hoopties. We're going to go out for a spin as well in the GT350, having driven here in my GT500 on the Where's Shmi US Edition Tour. So let's head in then, go have a look around and talk cars. Mr. Hoovy. Hello. How are you doing? It's me. It is. Good Hello, to me. Thank you for having me. Welcome Thank you. to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. It's good to be here. To be honest, even for me, it is very strange coming to visit a place I know so well from videos, but I've never been myself. It's very weird seeing you in, in person. <laughs> You're well, way more handsome. <laughs> well, thank you. Great, to, great to meet you. Great to be here. Um, great to see some of your your hoopties as well. A fair few around today. Some of the Lambos. Yes. Some of the cars here in your garage. Some more to go and visit. Plus something to do with car trek. But yes. we'll, we'll have to get to that. And then of course. GT350, yes, GT500. Yes. What a beautiful pair there. They are. They do look good together. The two lime green Mustangs from very different generations. Let's um, let's get out of the wind for the moment. It's, sure. it's actually freezing today. Um, inside here then, you have okay. the craziest of crazy lifts. Yes. So the garage, when I bought it, it uh, ended right here. This was the wall and uh, built out the garage. The mission is just right to hopefully fit <laughs> this lift. It fit. Benpack gave it to me, very, very kind of them, and uh, I can gallery stack hoopties, basically, so. I think um, we should probably just point out that hoopties are effectively your equivalent of the Shmimobiles. They are your cars of all sorts of different types, from yes. the Lambos and the SLS to Ferrari, Prowler, everything. Right, well, I guess, yeah, kind of Brady Bunch stacked. But uh, <laughs> uh, this one, this one's probably my favorite, though. Of all the cars, I guess we're starting with my favorite, is my 9348 with 100,000 miles on it. 100,000 miles. 100,000 miles, yeah. Capricious How many of them miles. were you? Uh, well, I bought it in at the Florida Georgia border, then drove it home, so about 3,000 of it. Okay. I've had it a year. I've, I've got a lot of cars to drive, but it was a, a very highly maintained car. It wasn't easy to get it to 100,000 miles based on the service records. It was uh, tens of yeah. thousands of dollars, but uh, it was owned by a Delta Airlines pilot, and he did a lot of the like car like maintenance. It's Well, it's just odd. I'll show you. Kind of hard to pop in here with the list, but those seats. The seats I did, but they came with these Recaro seats, and I wanted to bust fabric. But if you look at the interior, <laughs> maybe a little dark, but uh, this is yeah. house carpet. Okay, and as you do. It has a plywood center console that he managed to make himself yeah. with the window switches. So it's a uh, yeah, it's it's a strange, strange Ferrari. You don't see uh, many with that feature. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. In my head. Oh no, you're right. I'm fine. I wanted the cars a little lower so you can see them because they do full height in this beam. Uh, they hide away a little bit. Right, but uh, above it is a Plymouth Prowler 1999 in purple. And I think they're really underrated cars, honestly. Do you know? I know a little, occasionally you see them around the UK, occasionally. Yeah. Import cars, etc. They are very, very, very unusual things. Yeah, they, they actually were experimenting with bonding aluminum and they wanted to do it on a production car. Uh, a lower production car, and this this was it. And uh, you know, even though it has a retro body, it's very modern underneath. And a lot of people knock it for the V6 engine, like a 3.5 V6, but that was actually the best engine they had. So I dialed it up, tuned it to over 300 horsepower. Uh, snap, you know, made the rear end more snappy, and it's actually a, a pretty quick car. Do you know what it weighs? I sure don't. Can't be that heavy. No. Cool. The neighbor's shooting at us again. <laughs> Welcome to Kansas. <laughs> Is what it is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, next to it, this is a 1985 Mercedes 500 SL. It's actually pretty much my first car. My grandmother bought yeah. it new, and then she let me start driving it when I was 16, and uh, well, I still have it. I didn't do anything stupid with it, but. Uh, As it was. Yeah, I did all the period A and G stuff to it. Well, some of it, just the, the lip and the uh, old Pinto wheels, which mm -hmm. are worth a fortune now, but at the time, nobody cared about them. The way yeah. so many things have gone. Yeah, a lot of memories in this car. It was, uh, she had four grandkids and she would take us all around in this car with the top off. If you're in the back seat, you didn't have to wear your seat belt. Yeah. This is, you know, just di different time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, beneath it is a uh, 2001 Bentley Azure and uh, the original owner, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Really? Yeah. That's epic. So a <laughs> very expensive car, new, almost $400,000, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bought it for 30 grand. <laughs> so it's, that's unbelievable depreciation. 92 and a half percent depreciation. It's just, just massive. If you got a peek in the interior, this one is... Well, watching heads. Yeah, watching. Very, 
Very British, but... Nice. Jean-Claude Van Damme farted in that seat. <laughs> when you put it like that. <laughs> and also, Outrun 2. Yes. How epic, with the yes. F-50. Yes, yes, and I have Goldeneye. And you have Goldeneye pinball. pinball. Yes. This is cool. So I just bought a Sega Rally, which was kind of, I guess, the UK equivalent of Outrun. We were all playing Sega Rally everywhere. Awesome. For my garage. I love that kind of stuff now. Okay, safely does it, getting out. And then two Germans. Germans, yes. Uh, uh, 2001, or it's 2000, oh no, I don't remember which year. It's a Porsche 911. It's a 996, <laughs> early 996. 175,000 miles on it. I have no idea if the IMS has been done. Who cares, that's all overblown. Uh, <laughs> but it needed a paint job, and I decided to take it to Mako, which is kind of the affordable paint shop here in the United States. And I let my daughter pick the color, and she picked a plum crazy purple, a Mopar color. <laughs> And that's, that's its color, which I think is, is it's quite nice. It's actually quite fun. It is very fun. It looks like a, a Hoopty GT3 RS or whatever, but that's yeah. purple. Yes. Yeah, I like that, I like that. Yeah. And uh, below that is something you're slightly familiar with, you know. Slightly. Old Mercedes. Uh, old, Mercedes with old Mercedes. 2011 with SLS AMG. This was like the in-game car for me, my attainable dream car. Uh, not a black series, unfortunately, but it is. it, it does have the... I love the interior on this thing, which it's all very tight, but not much. just enough room to maybe open it. SLS doors yes. don't need as much space as people think it they works. do. You see, you could actually get into that yes. with next to no space. But it's the, <laughs> you've got a carbon steering wheel. Yes, yeah, the Designio <laughs> natural interior, which I think is very gorgeous on this. Yeah, and an aftermarket steering wheel that works. It does work. It I works. haven't got there yet. <laughs> I hope I will get there at some point down the line. Well, that is that's a cool way to get the cars in. I like that a lot. But there's something else we need to touch on here as well. Yes, last, certainly not least of the car trick cars you've been touring lately. Indeed, for the upcoming car trick videos, I have been to visit Freddy with his Ferrari, Ed with his Ferrari, and now here with you and your Ferrari. Yes, a 1994 456 that isn't a disaster, wasn't in a flood. I actually bought it from Dubai. Really? Imported it here from Dubai, but it spent most of its life in Japan. It only has 10,000 kilometers on it. Wait, this car has been on three continents? Correct. Four, four technically, because oh, it was yeah. built in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> it's been right. to four continents. And even better, look inside. It's a gated manual. Ooh, nice. So. Looks in pretty good nick. We should just not even do a car trek. I won, right? I, I'm thinking that. I mean, I mean this is looking good. <laughs> I'm pretty confident. It, it actually was. I think I bought it in October, so it took many, many months for it to get here, and it showed up. They had to drain the fuel tanks to, uh, you know, go on the shipping container, yep. and that ruined the fuel pumps, and there were ah. some other issues. So I kind of got it all. It's all the wizard fixed everything in time. We're going to leave tomorrow to shoot the car trek, uh, but Freddie's had his Ferrari for five months, and he's still working on it. I think <laughs> he's supposed to be hitting the road right now. Nothing like the last minute. Hopefully, hopefully he gets to this dark line. But I'm. I'm ready to go. We're going to tow it down there just to be safe, and you'll see the tow rig, and it's like there's more stuff outside. Yeah? Out we go. G-Wagon. And yes. all sorts. My side drive. So, <laughs> 140 uh, S500 coupe. They put a CL badge on it to make it look more modern. <laughs> I just really like these. They're weird. They're comfortable. Great generation yep. S-Class. This uh, led to G-Wagon. Uh, 220,000 miles on it, but it's the first uh, AMG uh, G-Wagon sold in the United States. It's not the supercharged one. This is the really first generation with the normally aspirated 5.5. Original G55. Still side pipes. Yeah, side pipes are always cool. And uh, we did the lift. We did the Kansas thing to it with the lift and the big tires. <laughs> it fits right in now. Yeah. Yeah, but this is this is what you probably should have bought for your US tour right here. Yeah, something very comfortable and yes. appropriate for long distance At drives. 2014 nine passenger uh, Chevy Explorer van. This is what we're gonna tow. Uh, to uh, tow the Ferrari down for, for car trek. But uh, here's one feature, it'd save you a lot in hotels. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me it's got like a bed back here. Battery might be dead. But, if it works. Uh, <laughs> I think I need the key. But yeah, this whole thing folds down. And you have a bed. bed. Amazing. You wouldn't have to, you just pull over and sleep. Easy. In hotels. Uh, <laughs> and it has the uh, six liter V8, so actually. Really? It's up and goes, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you gotta peek inside. It's basically a living room. A living room on wheels. Oh, it is. Yeah, come on in. It is indeed. Space for days in here. Yeah. 
Yep. Limo lighting, a second, well, one sunroof in the back. I don't know why. <laughs> Over the bed. <laughs> Giant TV with the Blu-ray player. This is living. Yeah, not bad. Good way to go on a long distance journey. Not bad at all. It's like a little sneak peek. Sneak peek, sneak peek. I haven't this one yet, but it's 135. Manual. Coming soon. Yes, coming soon. Coming soon, coming soon, right. Uh, the good stuff up front. Yes. It's cool having uh, our two Mustangs side by side. Oh yeah. Two very green Mustangs, two very different Mustangs, but this wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this. Right. Well, mine is not real. It's one of those poser tributes. It's like putting AMG badges on non-AMG cars, but... Uh, yeah. It looks the part. It does look the part, and it started out as a, a six-cylinder uh, 66 Mustang, and this person that I bought it from, he did the whole thing himself in the garage, completely restored it. He even painted it himself really? in his garage. And I think he did a great job for just just a you know guy on a side hobby. Uh, but the uh, cool part under the hood is kind of similar. It's a small block Ford, so 302, uh, but the old Kenny Bell supercharger. So similar. But supercharged Mustang. Yeah, but uh, no power steering, no power brakes. It's just uh, the drive. It's 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 old school, but it makes great noise. It's actually pretty quick. I think it's around 380 at the wheels, is what he told me. Okay. So for a light car, that's yeah, that's a lot. That's plenty. Probably weighs half this one. Yeah. This absolute fun. barge thing. It just it just wants to do burnouts basically. And yeah. Yeah. Get get sideways, but it's very very fun. I can believe it. And then over the other side, there yes. are two Lamborghinis. Yes. Missing one or well, missing quite a few hoopties at the moment. Actually. Right. Well, yeah. There's always several that are broken or some other places. But uh, yeah. Well, I guess we'll start with the Countach, which is a, a 89 25th anniversary Countach. I bought this in a bundle deal from a neurosurgeon in uh, uh, just down the road from me, five minutes away, and it was kind of a two for one deal. He just needed to get rid of some cars quick. And the Diablo is a lot more needy. It's getting its steering rack rebuilt, among other things. This car. I put tires on it and it's pretty much good to go. Perfect. So we can take <laughs> Great it addition. Out. So you have, you have a few different generations of V12 Lambos then? I guess three. Yeah, it's Countach, Diablo and Mercy. That's crazy epic. Crazy to think about. Yeah, this is this was the first one though and uh, it was Ed Bullion that found it for me. He bought it for $76,000 with a bad transmission and he gave me the friends and family discount and sold it to me for $99,900. That's a very nice discount. Very nice discount, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, bought a used transmission, put it in, you know, the, the transmission sits in front of the engine, so the engine has to come out yeah. for all this. Uh, some complications with that. Uh, we had to cut a hole in the car to fix the complication so the engine ha didn't have to come out again. And it, it works. It, it goes. It's been almost, uh, almost a year, I think, since it's been fixed. Beautiful. Well, there yeah. might be something coming with these, so watch that space. For now, though, I think we should head out with this. Step one, get this thing started up. Now with the sunshine out on it and the paint is looking glorious. The supercharger belt may squeak. Maybe, don't do it. <laughs> Let's see how it sounds when you start it. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds all right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the supercharger squeak followed. It did it, but it sounded good. They're, they're all hoopies for whatever reason. <laughs> Life would be boring if everything worked first time and it was easy, right? Right. Oh, this is cool. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I feel like a complete novice not knowing how any of this works, but this is funky. Yeah, well, the light comes on close to red line like an old dragster. <laughs> I really right. don't know I how else it works. Oh, you gotta do that one-handed. Yeah, I may have to buckle you, I don't know. <laughs> Let me see what I can do quickly. I don't know if this, that's a... We got there with the, uh, the seatbelt buckle. Right. That's cool. More supercharger wine than mine makes. Yeah, this thing's all supercharger. So the, the engine's out of a 93 Mustang, so the old 5.0 has okay. been built up. And the supercharger, of course. That's why it's quite as lively as it is. Nice five speed. Yeah, it's it's lively, that's that's the word, for sure. Well <laughs> it'll just break loose, that's all it does. <laughs> It revs up fast. No, no traction in this wet. <laughs> There's no traction at all. No, no. The roads are a little wet from this morning. But, yeah. Uh, even when the roads are dry, it's, that's what it wants to do. Traction is a wishful thinking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was relatively hilarious, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> in a straight line. <laughs> 
I feel like that's one of those like good luck going straight. Right. It's not gonna happen, is it? <laughs> it not sure. The only no. way to make it happen, take it super slowly. Maybe. Okay. No? <laughs> Take a nice photo of this in front of the other cars <laughs> just to make your life difficult. Now, how do you open this? You pull that. Oh, that's not too hard. That's kind of funky. I have been, I have remembered, I have been in a 60s Mustang way back um, with my friend's GT500 King of the Road in 2011 or so. But that's cool. I like it. A real one. A real, one. a real, real, real one. But this is cool. This is like. Like some more sensible money than that real King of the Road was. Slightly, <laughs> slightly. slightly. Uh, should think about it, I think. Well, that was awesome. Thank you very much for having me. It's great having you. Did you enjoy your trip back in time? You bet I did. I enjoyed that actually a lot more than I thought I would. Awesome. And great to see so many of the hoopties. An eclectic mix of cars. Eclectic is a word. Uh, idiotic is another, but yes, they're <laughs> all mine. They're all mine. And some of them work. Some of them, yeah, about half of them. That There's more that are broken. <laughs> the wizards in other places. Half of them here don't work, kind of, but they, they're here, so. I think you have a bit of a reputation for finding cars that have as many problems as they possibly could have. Yeah, I tend to do that. I, I, automotive masochism is what I call it. Yes. <laughs> it works, it works. Well, I see your uh, million subscriber plaque hanging over there. Yeah, that. The, Very the, cool. The dumbness got me that. So, there's <laughs> one achievement, yes. Well, if anybody out there is watching is not following Tyler and what you get up to, do go check out his channel. And um, I think stay tuned as well for what's coming with the other guys with Car Trek, which is going to be awesome. Well, it's been super cool to catch up with you. Thank you again for having me get along to, uh, to visit. And guys, there's going to be some more stuff coming as well with those. So stay tuned. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.